this is our last morning at this insane accommodation in the Colombian mountains. We have truly fallen in love with the wilderness and the smaller towns around this country. So today, instead of going back to Bogota or any other big city, we're gonna keep exploring these small towns. Unfortunately, we couldn't find heaps of information online about the towns we wanna to visit other than some gorgeous photos. We're gonna compare a couple of the options east of Bogota, starting with Villa de Levra and then going to Barachara. In a couple of hours, our host Isabel and Philippe are gonna pick us up and take us to the bus station. I think this little travel section is only gonna be a couple of hours and shouldn't be too difficult. I hope that's not foreshadowing, but I'm really excited to see what the small colonial Colombian towns are like here. We think we're at a bus station. Apparently there's a bus gonna come past here in about 10 minutes that we're gonna get on and I think take us to another place that's more of a bus hub and then we can get on another bus to Villa de Levia. We're on the bus, it's pretty squishy. An hour and a half ride to our next stop. We just got in, a guy on the bus helped us try and find the terminal to get to Villa de Levra and we bought a ticket and then the guy said it's five minutes, go now. So we're running to, I'm assuming, one of the ports. Can't really read it, but we're, we're gonna try and get on a bus really quick. Bus number two. First impressions of the town, it looks really cute. I'm excited to explore it all tomorrow. We've got about a 10 minute walk to our accommodation and then we can relax. This is Villa de Leva. Leva. L-E-Y-V-A. Leva. Leva. Villa de Leva. It is beautiful. We went in last night to just get some pizza quickly for dinner and it looks awesome. It is such a quaint, quiet, colonial style town. I'm so happy we came here. We were tossing it up and we decided to come and I'm so glad we did. We're gonna walk around the buildings, go to the square. There might be a market on, we think, as well. Yeah, it is a Saturday, so there should be a market somewhere. Hopefully we can find it. Jordan's gonna try some... Traditional food. Interesting food. <laughs> and we're going to a chocolate museum, because of course there's a chocolate museum here. <laughs> it's like time stopped in Villa de Leva. There's whitewashed buildings from the colonial period. These massive cobblestones make up this whole pedestrian area. It's such beautiful architecture. Really feels like you've gone back in time. Apparently that's because they built this town, it was like used as an army fortification kind of a base, but then there's no natural deposits here, no trade routes, and not really anything that's worth getting out of the ground. So they kind of just left it. Eventually they realized how beautiful and well preserved it is, and now it is a national monument type thing. It's preserved on purpose. It's really bizarre. The Colombian colonial architecture really reminds me of Veliko Tonovo in Bulgaria. Like every time I see a balcony with some plants and stuff, it just looks like Veliko Tonovo. It's so weird. <laughs> One of the best places to see the colonial architecture is where we are now. This is Plaza Mare at 14,000 square meters. It is one of the largest town squares in all of the Americas. The whole area is covered in massive cobblestones. And you just see the rolling hills in the background and then there's this church, which is just a very simple parish church. I think we're now gonna walk down one of these streets in hopes of getting to the market. Oh, I have a fun fact. Me too. I want to say mine first. No, the only thing that breaks up this massive plaza is this fountain that sits right in the oh, middle. And it's the wet place that villagers got water for four centuries. That and was my fun fact. <laughs> yeah, fun coming from me, I think. It is a cool fact for four whole centuries. That's all they had, one tiny fountain. That's crazy. God, high five. Now we're going to the market. <laughs> We have made it to the Saturday market and it looks pretty intense. Get it? Because they're intense. Mm. That was an accident. <laughs> Heaps of fruit and vegetable. Lots of people. This is so crazy. It's so much bigger and livelier than I was expecting. There's fresh fruit, vegetables, people cooking, music playing, people drinking already. I love it. 
This place is insane. I am so glad we are here on a Saturday. Probably the most local market I've ever seen. Some of these pumpkins are huge. It's massive. <laughs> market had it all. Like the freshest fruit, so colourful. So vibrant, like you could tell it was all organic and like homemade stuff. And then there was people along the side that had massive pots, all steaming and cooking things, like heaps of different sausages. We got to try a potato each, which yes. was delicious, she unsurprisingly. Was, <laughs> she was very nice. I think my favourite thing though, is that there was not one, but two open bar carts. Popular open bar carts. It's about like maybe 10 a.m. <laughs> Not even, with like stacks of beer and mm. people were just standing around drinking it. Lots of people. I love it. When in Colombia. When in Colombia. It is now time to eat. Yes, that potato was a good appetizer, <laughs> but it's time for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> Picked a winner, babe. We have come here for a, what can only be described as a milk egg soup, breakfast soup for Jordan. <laughs> but the staff are really nice. I think we picked a winner. I might get an arepa because I don't want milk soup. <laughs> this place is really cool. It's like the same whitewash that all the other buildings outside are, but inside. And everyone's just got pens and markers and marked all the walls. So there's like graffiti and messages and little cool drawings. It's nice, it's got a good wholesome vibe. I'm excited to try this milk soup. So this is one of the most traditional things you can have in Colombia. Apparently here in Villa La Leva it's pretty popular too. It's what I describe as milk soup. It's milk, a bit of water, some bread that has a couple of different types of bread in there, some cheese, and then an egg. A couple of eggs apparently. It's got cilantro and onions in it too. It's got a lot of the ingredients I like separate, so. It's pretty good. A lot of cilantro, like, takes over a lot of it. Not bad. Not something I would order, but it tastes a lot better than you think it will. <laughs> Enjoy. Let's go get some chocolate. To enter the chocolate museum, you need to buy some chocolate per person, so we did that. And now we're walking through, you can see them all making like these amazing desserts on the side. And I guess we just get to wander through and learn about Colombian chocolate. This is so weird. It's like Willy Wonka esque. This place is very extravagant. This is cool. It's so nice. I'd probably say, is the museum worth it? Bit of a tourist trap, but come in the cafe and get like a hot chocolate or something. Because it's themed and it's so extravagant and it feels like you're inside of a Charlie and the Chocolate Factory cafe. I'm super happy that we came to Villa de Leyva. We were really tossing it up to begin with because it's we're essentially going to have to backtrack to Tungho to get onwards to Barachara. But it's so worth it. It's such a quaint, charming little town. I kind of wish we had more time here because there's a lot of like archaeological sites and museums to check out but they're not necessarily in the town. Right next to the Chocolate Museum is back in the Mayor Square or the Mayor Plaza. It's a lot brighter than it was when we were here this morning and equally as pretty. I think that's the end of Villa de Leyva. Tomorrow we check out Barachara. Barachara is a town in northern Colombia known for its intricate and well-preserved colonial architecture. It has actually also earned the title of one of the most beautiful Colombian towns according to CNN. I'm trying so hard to learn Spanish but it is incredibly difficult. I just ordered as much as I could in Spanish and was like and what do you recommend? <laughs> so we're getting some bread thing that she recommends, a brownie and two iced chocolates, which we need because it is hot in Barachara. We're staying like a little bit down the hill. It's not actually that far, but it's uphill. There are no clouds in the sky. The sun is beating down. So the beads of sweat start almost immediately. A nice coffee is so needed. 
<laughs> it looks so good. It's like proper milkshake coffee. How much was it all total? <laughs> all of this is 18,000 cop. Right outside the restaurant we got breakfast in is Central Park, believe it or not. This is like the main square of Barichara. Is it actually called Central Park? Oh, it's a park <laughs> that's central. Most Colombian towns seem to have like a really lively town square like this. This one is really nice. So it's covered in trees. There's a fountain in the front. It can get really busy here at night though because the buses from San Gil let off at one corner and there's also all of these tuk-tuks trying to give you a tour of Barachara there as well. It is lined with restaurants and shops and a crazy looking church. Feels like a majestic garden. It's such a nice respite from the heat as well. These like the canopy, the water from the fountain, like it cools it down so much in the Central Park. It's a really good idea. I think from here we've got about a 20 minute walk to one of the best things to do here and a really nice lookout. The town is super charming. It has all of the beautiful but admittedly quite annoying cobblestone streets. The buildings are all whitewashed but a lot of them have like a second colourful tone on it with the contrasting like red tile roof and the beautiful shutters. Oh, it's so nice and then you have like you look down the street and you have these rolling hills in the background. It's just so beautiful here. I think there's about 17,000 people in Villa de Leyva and 7,000 here. You can feel it. There is like no one on the streets. It's so nice. Except for the bubby dogs. Come in, little boy. We are starting to get the good views, but we're also on a highway, and I'm not 100% sure that these directions are correct. <laughs> Turns out, don't follow Where Google Maps. <laughs> Yeah, don't put in Barachara Lookout or Barachara Viewpoint and follow it. If you're on a main road, you're not going the right way. It was like cliffside highway that we were walking on. But we think we know the way now. This is a lookout. It's definitely not the one on the internet. And it's probably a lot less official, but it looks really cool. It does. What's confusing me is it's called Barachara Lookout. To me, that means it's a lookout of Barachara. No. <laughs> it is not. No. But it's beautiful. Yeah, we found a, one of the only trees here that we could hide. <laughs> get some respite from the sun. And there's a nice horse here. It's still beautiful. Beautiful. The rolling hills are so vibrantly green and they're huge. They're covered in clouds. It's insane. I think if we keep walking along one, like Carrera one, and then we can make our way back to town. Because the official one should be that way. We are officially giving up trying to find the official lookout. We found two really nice ones. We found a restaurant that looked like it had a really good lookout too, but it was closed. That might be where everyone goes. Anyway, it's a bit past midday now. I think we're gonna get some traditional Colombian food. That seems like a random stop off, but cemetery is actually one of the top 10 things to do in this city. The thing that makes the cemetery a tourist attraction is the stonework. So a lot of it is just religious, Jesus, sacred heart, that sort of stuff. But some of them have been made into like the personality traits, the work lives of the deceased. Like we saw a sewing machine, a little ukulele looking thing, and one that just looked like a grandpa. The detail is pretty insane that they can get out of stone. Well, it was really pretty. Now food. Looks like most restaurants are still closed. They might have been even later than midday. So the plate that we were gonna get, which is a Colombian thing, it's like a plate of the day and you just get a meat and a salad and a soup, we're not gonna be able to get. We have come to a pretty famous restaurant here called Mia or Mija, which looks so beautiful and quaint so we're probably not going to get traditional Colombian food but we're going to get fed oh my lord I think to sum up this video of Villa de Leyva versus Barachara, 
it's really tough actually. I went into today thinking Villa de Leyva was better, but now that we've had some incredible food and walked around a little bit more, Barachara might take it. I think Barachara also has going for it. It's only a half hour from San Gil, which is a mm. huge hub, so it's not really out of the way, whereas Villa de Leyva kind of was. I will say if you have like mobility issues, probably Villa de Leyva, because it's very hilly here. <laughs> the next time you see us, we will have caught an overnight bus all the way to the Caribbean coast. Not a natural wow, I was about to say it's really peaceful here, but two motorbikes and a car and a bird just started at the same time. Look how big these wooden spoons are. They're made for pumpkins. This town, Batachata, literally translates to the place of rest. Yet to get here, you have to transfer through San Gil, which is meant to be like the adventure capital of Colombia. It's crazy to me that a half an hour drive is what separates crazy adventure from like peaceful, beautiful, laid back streets. <laughs> 